Hello, in this video we derive the marginal distributions of a Dirichlet distribution. Now I have a video out, I'm going to call it background video one, it's called derivation of the Dirichlet distribution. And we'll give just a very quick review here because I think it'll help in the marginal distributions. In, in this video, we let the Xi be gamma, gamma random variables, Xi1, and um, they're independent and we go from 1 to K. And we set up a transformation of random variables, PI, which is, you know, XI over the total sum. And then PK was this total sum. And then we found the joint density of those. And then we had to integrate out PK. And, and then we found the distribution of P1 through PK minus 1. And that was the Dirichlet distribution with gamma. And this is a, a vector. And the vector is, you know, the or the parameters. Uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, through alpha k. And the, the density, and I'm so sorry for this, but I, when I was writing this up, I forgot to include this, so I went back and wrote it. And so that's the, the uh, joint density. And here we let x0 or x0 be the sum of the, of the alphas. Anyway, that's a quick review. And I also have another video called Background Video 2, Sums and Ratios of Gamma Random Variables. And there we derive a beta distribution. And now beta distribution is a Dirichlet distribution with only alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now, so often you call it, um, yeah, th that's it. And so um, x1 was a gamma alpha 1 beta and x2 was gamma alpha 2 beta. They're independent. We set up a transformation and we and ended up y was x1 over x2 and then we had z which is the sum and then we found the joint distribution of y and z and then integrated out z and then that and y ended up being a beta with x1 and or alpha 1 alpha 2 which is a Dirichlet distribution and with uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now this is the density of a beta distribution and that's a pretty common thing and so here y is between 0 and 1 and so then this term is between 0 and 1 because you subtract it now it's often written like this though well not a beta distribution but a Dirichlet distribution is where this is y1 and this is y2 but then you have to put the requirement that the y's add to 1. But both of these are the same distribution. This one, you just have to say y is between 0 and 1. Here, you have to say they summed 1. So we're going to make use of both of these properties um, in, the, in the derivation of the uh, marginal distribution. So let's find the distribution of just one of the random variables, say pi. So as a reminder, xi was a gamma, and if we sum all the other x's except for xi, it's also a gamma, right? Because each of these x's are independent random variables, and then we just write sum them all but sum out the xi, and that's a gamma with uh, x0 minus x1. Well, pi, and if you go review background video one was set up like this but xi is was of course gamma but this bottom piece if we if we set aside the xi term and then sum the rest that's what this is so it's xi and then the yi's are here but really we're summing two it's it's two gamma distributions right here and right here so that's a beta with that one, xi, and then the, the bottom part is x0 minus xi, where this is the sum of all the alphas, which is a Dirichlet distribution. We know that, which is this. And so this piece right here, so we have two random variables, x1, or xi and yi, and, rate, and it's a beta. So that's exactly what we did in this video, right? We had two gamma random variables, a ratio, and it was a beta. 
Now, if we look at the joint distribution of PI and PJ, we do something very similar. So, we sum all the x's except for the i-th one and the j-th one. So that's what this term is. But since all these x's are independent, you know, variables, gamma variables, it's also a gamma, right? So the alpha of this is the atom up of the alphas. But remember, we're not adding the i and the j-th term. So it's all the gammas minus the i-th and j-th alpha. So now, and now we do something very similar. So here, remember PI was XI and the sum, but instead of summing them all, we take out the ith one and the jth one, and then we just have Y, which, and so really this is the same as this, but we think about it as this is one gamma distribution, that's another gamma distribution, and that's the third gamma distribution. And then for PJ, we do the same thing, XJ, um, and this is the sum of all of them. That's the way it's originally defined. So this is the XJ, right? This is XI, and this is Y. So again, there's three gamma distributions, and we know that the distribution of these is a Dirichlet. And so this is XI, this is, uh, or alpha I, alpha j, and then this is the sum of them all, but not including alpha i and alpha j. And this right here is the exact same development that we did here. So, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.